Hello, and welcome to the Global Health Programs Information Session, also known as, so, you want to get involved with global health. Our goals for this session are twofold. First, for you to get to know us, become familiar with the Spartman Center, who we are, and what we offer, and decide which method you'll use to keep up with what we're doing. Also, make a plan to get involved. We want you to be able to identify at least one program you're interested in pursuing and know a specific action that you would need to take to make that happen. In the Sparkman Center, our mission is to develop sustainable approaches to advance global health equity and social justice through support for cutting edge interdisciplinary education, research, global health practice and community engagement in collaboration with international and domestic partners. The Sparkman Center celebrated our 40th anniversary in 2019, and we are proud of our legacy. As we go through these programs that we offer, you'll see how we are focusing on these three pillars of education, research, global health practice, and community engagement. So first, a little about our team. Dr. Janet Turan is the director of the Sparkman Center. She's also a professor in the School of Public Health Department of Healthcare Organization and Policy and a co-director of the Behavioral and Community Sciences Corps for the UAB Center for AIDS Research, or CIFAR. Dr. Anna Halova is our deputy director. She's also an instructor for global health classes like the graduate level maternal and child health class and the undergraduate level cases class. In the Spikeman Center, she focuses on our research-centered programs like pilot projects and work with international collaborators. Dr. Meredith Garten is the director of the Global Health Studies Certificate. She's an assistant professor in the School of Public Health, Department of Healthcare Organization and Policy. And in the Spikeman Center, she is over the graduate certificate program, which includes students in the IGS or interdisciplinary graduate studies program, as well as the CFAT field course. My name is Katie Adams and I am program manager in the Sparkman Center. And I am the point person for our student focused programs, such as the global health case competitions, Peace Corps internships, Sparkman fellows, and I serve as a coordinator for the graduate certificate. Newly on our team, we have Cameron Durham, program coordinator. She is in charge of Sparkman events and seminars and is handling our social media and communications. There are also three graduate students affiliated with our office, doctoral students, Lisa Kimbo, Allison Spensley, and Kevin Awar. So now to meet our programs. For each program, I'll explain what it is and how you can get involved. We've got the Global Health Certificate, the CFAT Field Course, Peace Corps Prep, Sparkman Fellows, the Global Health Case Competition, seminars, summer internships, and travel scholarships, which we'll talk about together as they are Similar, connected, but still distinct. As you can see, there is a guide down at the bottom of the slide, so you always know where we are. So if you are interested in an interdisciplinary program for students seeking a set of skills for understanding contemporary health challenges and thinking about how these challenges might best be solved to improve health and health equity worldwide, then I think you'll be very interested in our graduate certificate in global health. Kweku graduated from the certificate a couple years ago and he said the most useful lesson he learned was the management of NGOs or non-governmental organizations and through the program he was able to establish an NGO in his home country of Ghana, which merges the global health training he got in the certificate program, as well as 
the doctoral level work he's doing in the vision science program. Mari graduated with her MPH a year ago and she said, I choose, chose to pursue the GHS certificate because I wanted to continue pursuing my interest in global health. Through this program, I was able to understand the impact of individual health and healthcare deliveries. I hope to work with organizations in the US and abroad. So first to clarify the difference between the undergraduate concentration in global health and the graduate certificate. So the undergraduate concentration is for undergraduate students and specifically public health majors. There's 21 credits specifically for that concentration and there are two required courses. The graduate certificate is a 15 credit hour graduate program open to any UAB graduate student, which includes you know, masters, doctoral, professional students from any discipline. Um, working professionals often join the certificate program as non-degree seeking students and select undergraduate students can apply to be part of the graduate certificate program. There are also two required courses for the GHS certificate, Fundamentals of Global Health and Global Health Partnerships and Development. Now, some of our courses are cross-listed across undergraduate and graduate. For example, the Immigrant, Migrant, and Refugee Health class, typically offered in the fall, is open to undergraduate and graduate students. And right now, um, we're working on developing some service learning components and opportunities to work with a refugee organization in Birmingham, Alabama as part of that course. Another cross-listed course is the Global Communicable Diseases course, or the Infectious Disease course, which is typically offered in the spring. So more about the graduate certificate. As I said, it's a 15 credit hour program. Six of those hours are the two core courses. And then the other nine hours are electives. We have a variety of global health electives and then there are some approved electives from other disciplines as well. So it's possible that if you are, for example, an MPH student interested in the certificate, it's possible that one of the classes for your MPH can count towards the global health certificate. And it's also possible a class for the certificate can count towards your MPH. So integrating these two curriculums together and ensuring that um, you are taking the courses that meet your goals and your interest um, without having to add too many more hours to your course load in order to do your primary degree program and the certificate program. As I said, it's open to UAB graduate students, working professionals, and select undergraduate students. A new program um, is the Master's in Interdisciplinary Graduate Studies. This is a, either an MA or an MS degree that combines two certificates from across UAB schools plus a capstone project. So students really have the opportunity to make their own path in their master's studies. There's so many options to combine with the Global Health Certificate over 20 certificates are a part of this new program, including research communication, nonprofit management, social and behavioral statistics, public administration, instructional leadership, higher education administration. It's a really long list and really provides the opportunity for students to think creatively about the kind of master's education that they're interested in and what most meets their both interest and career goals. So that's one way to pursue the certificate. Other people add the certificate on top of their other degree program, like a master's or a doctoral degree. And some people take the certificate as a standalone as non-degree seeking students. Every student that comes into the program has advising meetings with me, the program 
manager and also Dr. Meredith Garten, the program director, to make sure that you will graduate in the time that you would like to and that you take the courses you're interested in. For spring, we have four courses to choose from. The infectious disease or communicable diseases class, the core class, Global Health Partnerships and Development, which is a seven week online class. It's in the first seven weeks of the semester. GHS 606 is the critical issues in global maternal and child health. And then a new class for this spring is GHS 645, Comparative Health Systems and Policy. For this first offering, this class will be in person um, with the hopes of it being an online class as well in the future. Okay, a couple more quotes from students before we switch gears. Pandora had already received her PhD and was studying for her MPH in epidemiology when she decided to add on the Global Health Certificate. And she said, I have participated in lots of opportunities, both in the US and abroad. However, I had never understood what it meant to be in global health. I feel like I had a narrow view of the world and the GHS certificate helped me expand my horizons. Another student, Maria White, said that she pursued the Global Health Certificate to better align her nursing background with her career goals in global health. And while she was an MPH student, she was able to work with experts in global health during her coursework at UAB and then her internship with the Alabama Interfaith Refugee Partnership. Upon graduation, Maria was hired as a medical training coordinator for the African Peacekeeping Rapid Response Partnership, the US Department of State Managed Program. If you're interested in enrolling in the Global Health Certificate, you can submit the enrollment form, which includes a brief personal statement on the Spartan Center website. Undergraduate students that are interested need to submit an application, which will include an unofficial transcript, resume and career statement, also available on our website, Non-degree seeking students apply through the UAB Graduate School. Now, if you wanna hear more about a hands-on program to learn about sustainable and community-based models of development with a particular focus on technology and innovations, you're gonna to wanna to know more about CFAT. CFAT stands for the Southern Institute for Appropriate Technology. It's not a study abroad program, but a study away program. CFAT is a field course in Lineville, Alabama, where students go to learn about sustainable and community-based models of development. The program is one week of online modules, two weeks on-site in Lineville, which is about an hour and a half east of Birmingham, and then another week of online modules over the course of the Maymaster term and it counts for six credit hours. For people who want to go abroad but can't make it work, this is a way to stay stateside while having a very international experience and field training. We are often able to invite international partners to come and train alongside students on issues and technologies that they use in their home country and have proven successful to help with water and sanitation, agriculture, housing security, and so many other topics. There is a $300 non-refundable deposit and then the $120 application fee to education abroad, plus however regular tuition works for you. There is no further program fee for staying on site for two weeks, all the meals, course materials, et cetera, are all covered. Other topics covered at CFAT include these fuel efficient cook stoves, which obviously students were very excited to have successfully lit a fire in one. Solar cookers, which you can see students working in a team to build there. They then cooked their afternoon snack in the solar cookers. Inertia pumps and other kinds of water collecting devices and then gardening, cooking with fortified powder and other low cost strategies for improving maternal and child health. 
So as you can see, it is a jam-packed couple weeks and there is so much more to say about CFAP. So if you are interested, I would highly encourage you to attend the in-person info session with Dr. Garten, the program professor, on November 18th at 5 p.m. It'll take place in Riles Public Health Building, room 107. There will be instructions for um, accessing that digitally as well. That information is to come. Then you apply to the program through Education Abroad. Deadline is February 1st. And the course May Master starts May 9th with the two weeks on site at CFAP from May 15th to May 28th. And the course ends June 2nd. Because the program is being run through Education Abroad, we're excited that students will be able to access the application for Education Abroad scholarships. And that includes undergraduate and graduate students because CFAT is cross-listed as GHS 430 and GHS 630. All right, if you're interested in a service opportunity for motivated change makers to immerse themselves in a community abroad, working side by side with local leaders to tackle the most pressing challenges of our generation, you might be interested in Peace Corps. And if you're an undergraduate student interested in Peace Corps, you might be interested in the Peace Corps prep program. But first, what is Peace Corps? Peace Corps was established over 50 years ago. It's a US program with the mission to provide world peace and friendship by fulfilling three goals. One, to help the people of interested countries in meeting their need for trained men and women. Two, to help promote a better understanding of Americans on the part of the people served. And three, to help promote a better understanding of other peoples on the part of Americans. Peace Corps service is two years long, plus an initial three months of training. Volunteers are US citizens, at least 18 years old, and it is a great program for everyone from college graduates to retirees, people ready to change their career, or anyone looking to make a difference in the world. Volunteers serve across six main sectors, health, agriculture, education, community economic development, the environment, and youth and development. I personally was an education volunteer in Nicaragua from 2012 to 2015. And it was one of the best professional experiences of my life. I'm happy to talk about more about it if you're interested. Peace Corps volunteers serve in over 60 countries across the globe. Here you can see the regions host the most volunteers. Currently, Peace Corps is working to open programs back up after evacuating all volunteers when the pandemic began. So the Peace Corps prep program corresponds with the Peace Corps application process. Um, it is an undergraduate certificate open to students from any area of study. Also, although you do have to be a U.S. citizen to serve in the Peace Corps, you do not have to be a U.S. citizen to complete the Peace Corps prep program. Um, so anyone interested in international development work can use the Peace Corps prep certificate and framework to intentionally think about what courses they want to take, what experiences they want to focus on in their time in undergraduate um, in order to best prepare themselves. Um, for that kind of work. There are four goals within the Peace Corps prep program. First, the work sector training and experience. So students pick which sector they're most interested in working in. For example, if you pick health, you would take three courses related to the health sector. They could be public health classes, nursing classes. There's a whole list in our UEB student guide to Peace Corps prep document. You would also gather at least 50 hours of related experience through an internship, a job, volunteer hours. Um, it could be a project or component of a class depending on 
um, if it, there were enough hours there. Um, and there are examples of specific experiences that would meet this um, goal in that document as well. Foreign language requirements for Peace Work Prep depend on what geographic region the student is interested in. It's up to two courses. If you're interested in going to a Spanish speaking country, you need two courses at the 200 level in Spanish. For countries with French speaking, um, you have to take one 200 level course in French. But for any other area of the world, there's no specific requirement for taking courses. Professional development and leadership involves resume prep, interview prep, and then a demonstration of leadership through service, a job, um, involvement with a student organization. And finally, intercultural competence is three courses from an approved list that we have. And these are often courses that students have already taken to meet their um, core requirements for their undergraduate degree or are courses that they were interested in and wanting to take anyway. If you are ready to join the Peace Corps Prep Program, you can gather more info on our website and download the UAB Peace Corps Prep Student Guide and look through it to see more specifics about what courses and experiences would meet the goals for you. You can meet with me during virtual office hours, which are listed on our website and our social media, or email to schedule an appointment um, to discuss your plan. And then there is a link to the application form. It's posted on Qualtrics. The link is on our website. And that's how you join the program. All right, we're going to shift gears a little bit um, away from the specific classroom environment to other ways to get involved in global health programs during your time at UAB that aren't specifically class related. So I'm talking to the highly motivated and engaged students that are looking to enhance their understanding of global issues through a year of direct mentorship. That sounds like it might be you. You might be interested in our Sparkman Fellows Program, which is a mentorship program open to undergraduate, graduate, and professional students from any discipline or area of study at UAB. Sparkman Fellows are paired with a faculty mentor for a year, and they may focus on goals related to research, global health practice, or professional development. To give you some examples, Shervan was a Spartan Fellow from 2019 to 2020, paired with Dr. Philip Musa from the Klatt School of Business. Shervan was really interested in e-health and how e-health can be used in developing countries. And she had the goal of identifying major challenges and needs in small island, island developing states like St. Lucia, where she's from, as well as opportunities for e-health adoption. And so some of what she did was gather survey data from a sample of 100 St. Lucians and use that survey to gauge the readiness for e-health adoption, anticipated challenges, and national health priorities. And so her scholar mentor, who is in the Department of Management Information Systems and Quantitative Methods, was obviously able to offer his expertise and input on the design of this survey, how to effectively deploy the survey and get the information that she was looking for. Another former fellow is Amy Jasani, who is paired with Dr. Jody Dion Odom from the School of Medicine. Amy was interested in gaining exposure to global health research in infectious disease, nutrition, or pediatrics. And while working with Dr. Dion Odom, Amy was able to do a review of existing literature on the topic of sexually transmitted infections potentially associated with women in Cameroon experiencing secondary infertility compared to fertility. 
Amy said some of the skills that she gained was understanding study designs and how to use epidemiological concepts in exploring a research question and thinking about how a setting and culture affects a research question, especially given her initial unfamiliarity with the sub-Saharan African region and specifically Cameroon. If you're curious to join the Sparkman Fellows Program, applications will open in March of this next year. It does run as an academic year program, so we will have applications and select fellows before spring semester ends. Over summer, we will match fellows with their scholar mentor. And then for the next academic year, so fall of 2022 to spring of 2023, you'll meet with your mentor on a schedule that you determine. Okay, so if you're ready to have a little fun with global health, to collaborate on a multidisciplinary team, to come up with creative, innovative recommendations for global health issues, and maybe, just maybe, win some cash prizes, then you really need to join us for the next Global Health Case Competition. Global Health Case Competitions have been happening at UAB for over a decade. For the past couple of years, the Spartman Center has worked in collaboration with the Lister Hill Center for Health Policy. So we've brought a policy component to the Global Health Case Competitions. Starting this year, we are also working with the Office of Education Abroad. And I'll get more into that in a moment. So the next case competition will be January 29th, 2022. And that may seem far away now, but registration will open November 11th. Um, and so highly recommend you join us for one of the information sessions we'll have in November. We'll go through all the details of what it means to participate and how. But for a really quick overview now, how it works is the competition happens on Saturday, the Monday before we release the case topic to teams. Teams have from Monday when that case topic is released until Saturday morning when they present to a panel of judges to develop and create a presentation for the innovation that they recommend for that year's case topic. And winning teams get cash prizes. $1,500 is split across the first place team members, $1,000 for second place, and $500 for third place. And if you're wondering, what is this, what is a case? What does that mean? A couple examples of recent cases have been waste management and e-waste in Ghana. That was from fall of 2019, the first year that we partnered with the Lister Hill Center. Mental health of Syrian refugees living in Jordan, and child health and deforestation in the Amazon region of Peru. So as you can see, there's a health issue, a population, and a place involved in each case topic. So how to get involved. You can attend an information session. We'll have one November 5th, which is a Friday at noon and the next week on Thursday, November 11th at 5 p.m. And if you come to the info session, you will get a sneak peek of our next case topic. As I said, we are collaborating with the Office of Education Abroad, and that means that this year's case topic is going to reflect the actual needs and interests of a partner for a UAB study abroad class. So at the information session, we will be announcing which partner and which class the case topic will be working with. Um, but we still will not say what the health issue is or who the specific population is. So much of the case will still be a secret, but you'll get a sneak peek for the real practical implications that we want the case competition to have this year and moving forward. So come to the info sessions for that. Then Starting November 11th, you can register as a team. You can also register as an individual. If you don't have a team of students you know you wanna work with, 
You can submit your name as an individual and we do our best to make magic happen on the back end so that everybody who wants to participate has a space and a slot on a team to participate. Then in January, we will have the competition. All right. If you're ready to spend an hour hearing directly from global health experts on their area of expertise and the work they're currently doing, then you need to start coming to some of our seminars if you haven't already. We offer global health seminars throughout fall and spring semesters. And we always share details about which ones are coming up in our monthly newsletter, on our social media channels, on our website, and they're listed in the UAB events calendar. All virtual seminars um, since the pandemic started are now available on our YouTube. So if you missed one recently, or if you're interested to see what past topics have been, you can check out our YouTube for that. We have two upcoming webinars uh, presented from folks working in the field of mental health. One is Dr. Lynette Ungari presenting on addressing mental health challenges in populations affected by HIV in Kenya. And then on Wednesday, November 17th, Dr. Carolyn Bolton Moore will be presenting on addressing mental health for adolescents in Lusaka, Zambia. Dr. Bolton Moore is a UAB School of Medicine professor who is based in Zambia and works with the Center for Infectious Disease Research in Zambia, or CIDRS. Another seminar coming up in November is this one from the School of Public Health professor, Dr. Sadeep Shrestha. He will be talking about what factors lie behind the high prevalence of head and neck cancer in Nepal. It'll be really interesting on Thursday, November 11th at 10 a.m. Okay. I know this is what you have all been waiting for and likely why you wanted to come to the information session or a large part of why. Um, if you're interested in spending your summer collaborating with an international partner in global health, in a global health focused practicum, internship or research opportunity, then I bet you wanna know more about summer internships or travel scholarships or both. So I'm gonna talk about these two programs and I wanna start by highlighting the similarities and the differences in how they're organized, when to apply, how much money you can receive and who is eligible to apply. Global Health Summer Internships, the internship location and area of work is organized by the Sparkman Center. We work directly with our partners to identify who would like to have an intern and what they want that intern to work in. For the Moses Sinkala Travel Scholarship, the research topic or the project topic, location and travel dates or, are organized by the student who applies. For summer internships, students, the applications will open by the end of this calendar year of 2021. And if Internships are able to be held in person in 2022 as we are crossing our fingers and hoping they will be, then students will receive a $3,000 stipend to support their travel. Applications for Moses and College Travel Scholarships will open in early 2022 and students can receive up to $3,000 to support their proposal. Summer internships are open to upper level undergraduate students, graduate students, and professional students. So those in the School of Medicine, Dentistry, Optometry, et cetera. The Moses and Kala Travel Scholarship is open to any UAB student. The Spartman Center is proud to collaborate with international partners in order to offer international global health related internships and practicum opportunities for eligible UAB students over the summer. And for summer 2022, our internships are focusing on strong partnerships across three East African countries. Now to preface this, we are planning for these to be the internships that we offer. Of course, 
Things can change, as we all know and are aware. However, our current plans for summer 2022 internships include the Sunrise Center, which is located in the Makono District of Uganda. We'll host one to two interns there, and topics will include maternal and child health, home visit programs, and midwifery. Sunrise programs that UAB students have worked with in the past include the Rise Up program at the Sunrise School, which assisted teachers to provide age appropriate health talks and disseminate information on gender-based violence, gender equality, reproductive health and rights. Another program was the CARE program at the Family Health Center. CARE stands for Communication, Attachment, Respect, Equality. So this program focused directly on maternal and child health by preparing um, things for women's visits at the health center. Um, now, in the remote internship, this looked a little different than was initially planned, but interns were still able to support people living with HIV, with extra health information, um, to prepare talks for um, a women's group of women who were living with HIV and expecting to go over different topics they were interested in every week. Um, and so even in remote internship situations, interns have been very able to be involved in Sunrise Center programs. So of course we are hoping for it to be in person in 2022. Our next internship plan and opportunity is with Kenya Medical Research Institute, also known as Kemri, based in Nairobi, Kenya. We plan for one position that will focus on prevention of interpersonal and gender-based violence. And then a second intern position in Kenya, hopefully be with the National Eye Conservancy in the Masai Mara. And topics here could involve conservancy, mental health, and healthcare access. And finally, the Center for Infectious Disease Research in Zambia, located in Lusaka, Zambia, will host two interns focusing on HIV, hepatitis, and TB. Ciders and UAB have a long history. In fact, back in 2001, UAB and the Sparkman Center, the University of Zambia School of Medicine, and the Zambia government collaborated to found Ciders. Currently, multiple UAB School of Medicine faculty are based in Zambia, and there are other collaborations as well, like two of our global health pilot projects that Sparkman Center awarded this year are based in Zambia. So there's a lot of collaborations and um, work going on between UAB and Zambia right now. And we're excited for student interns to be able to be a part of that. This is an example of a poster presentation that a 2020 summer intern did at the end of her internship. Shefa is a current student in the School of Medicine and also an alum from the MPH program and interned with the Sunrise Center. You can read more details and see internship posters from 2020 and 2021 summer internships on our website. Applications for internships will open by the end of this year. We will ask for your unofficial transcript, resume, and there will be some short essay questions. We'll do interviews with the top candidates with the partner agency. Um, they're involved in selecting which in turn will work with them. Then over spring semester, students will prepare for their summer travel by obtaining travel approvals through Education Abroad and participating in a Canvas training course with the Sparkman Center, where we go over topics like safety and travel, global health practice, and ethics and decolonization. Then the intern will travel for the internship if it is safe and possible. We'll have periodic check-ins during the internship. And then at the end, interns will submit their end of internship report, including a poster presentation and an essay where they talk about lessons learned, 
pictures, et cetera. Part of this timeline is we want everyone doing an internship for credit to be able to apply for scholarships offered by Education Abroad. And that deadline is March 15th. So we will be selecting interns with that deadline in mind so that people can receive extra funding if possible. Our other travel scholarship program is the Moses Sincala Travel Scholarship. This program's goal is to exist, assist exemplary graduate and undergraduate students to complete an international internship or research opportunity with an award of $3,000. As I said, the Moses and College Travel Scholarship is where the student has a specific project in mind. Maybe they are already working with a professor on a project and want to be able to travel with that professor as part of that research. Maybe they have found a different internship opportunity that they want to do um, that is in global health. Some students in doctoral programs with dissertations focused on global health are able to apply for the Moses and Kala Travel Scholarship to assist in collecting the research data they need for their dissertation project. Some examples of past projects include Tayaba Khan on the far left, She's an undergraduate student studying international health and human rights and a Spartan fellow. And she went to Pakistan to intern with the volunteer force against hepatitis transmission. Reshmi Mukherjee in the middle on the top uh, studied TB and social stigma. And she worked with her Spartan scholar mentor for a year and then traveled to Kolkata, India to collect data for her research project. Dr. Tehran and Reshmi published multiple manuscripts after this project, um, one of which was exploring manifestations of TB related stigma experienced by women in Kolkata, India, and it was accepted into the Annals of Global Health. Marissa Swanson in the middle on the bottom was a doctoral student in clinical psychology and traveled to Uganda for research regarding improving child supervision to reduce the risk of childhood in injury and then Bara Hajaz, an undergraduate student in neuroscience, traveled to Greece to work with Medical Volunteers International on electronic health records for their clinics, which serve refugee populations. The application process for this scholarship is pretty similar to internships, except that applications will open in early 2022 and students must submit a project proposal where they describe what are they doing, what are their goals, who are they working with, what mentor is guiding them or supporting them in this, and what is their budget for this travel. That is different than the internship because for the Moses and Kala scholarship, the student is organizing it. And so obviously we need details about it before we could consider supporting it. Then prepare and travel. Sincala scholarship recipients often travel in the summer, but travel can happen later in the year. Finally, we have, we often support student travel or participation in global health conferences, especially the Q Consortium of Universities of Global Health Conference. The next one will be in early 2022 and it will be a virtual conference. And we've also supported student participation in the Global Health and Innovation Conference, which is hosted yearly by Unite for Sight um, at Yale. Priority is given to student applicants that have accepted abstracts. And currently the deadline to submit abstracts to the Q Conference has been extended to the end of the month, um, this month, October 31st. Uh, details on how to apply for these scholarships will be announced in our social media and in our monthly newsletter. So make sure you're connected with us in some way so that you know when that opportunity is available. All right, wow, you might be thinking, how am I supposed to remember all of this? And the truth is that's impossible. So we have created this handy dandy chart of our different programs who can be involved, how you get involved, and when.
It's a lot to take in. I recommend you screenshot it. And finally, there are many ways to keep in touch with us. You can email Spartman Center at uab.edu at any time. You can attend weekly office hours held on Zoom on Thursdays from 10 a.m. to noon. Our monthly newsletter goes out on the first Tuesday of the month. You can sign up for that on our website as well. And you can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at Spartman Center or on Facebook, UAB Spartman Center for Global Health. I will leave you with this thought that guides the work we do. When it comes to global health, there is no them, only us.